judges and all of the audience here. Hi, my name is Melody Harpes and I am from SMB Pantai Kosta Magelang. I am here to tell you guys about the legend of Mount Ida. Mount Ida is not only a characteristic, but it is also a pride for us Magelang residents. Its existence makes this city is beautiful, cool, and comfortable for Magelang residents. And by the way, did you know how the story of Mount Dida appear right in the middle of the center. Are you curious about this? Well, let me tell you. Once upon a time, there was a fertile land. The land is beautiful with a vast expanse of trees and flowers that makes this island is comfortable for a variety of animals. This island is called Java Island. But unfortunately, this island, it can never be called. It was swayed by ocean waves. And because of that, the earth began to shake and the ground is split. And of course, the large trees are uprooted from their roots and they have fallen. And even many of the animals run around indefinitely. Many of them die too. And seeing all these miseries, the gods then convene. And after a long discussion, the gods finally agreed to nail the Java Dwipa Island. He nailed it right in the middle of the center. But suddenly, there was a tremendous voice from the bottom of the earth. Kaboom! Boom! Boom! A mountain suddenly appeared right in the middle of the center. And then because of that, the island of Java became calm and sturdy. It was no longer swayed by ocean waves. But the mountain, it became haunted and spooky. The mountain was inhabited by many evil spirits and many demons. And for your information, the word Tida from Mount Tida is from two Indonesian languages. Two Indonesian words, sorry. Two Indonesian words, it's from Mati and Muda. So it's Tida. Okay, back into the story. On the one day, a chef from Turkey named Chef Subakir came. He ventured to come to Mount Tida to conquer the genies on the mountain. Chef Subakir is an Islamic cleric who was tasked by his father Sultan Muhammad I to spread Islam throughout the archipelago and to conquer the genies and demons on the mountain. Shesubakir then stuck a magical black stone that had been filled by Aji Chakra, and then he sat meditating to ask the Almighty for strength. And suddenly, the thunder surged. The wind blew violently. The thunder cracked like fire rain. And indeed, all of the genies ran helter and skelter to save themselves and even many of them died because of the heat and seeing all of this Sabdapawan who was the king of his genies gets very angry he then asked to Shesubakir about what he has done and then they fought each other they were arguing about who was the territory master is it Shesubakir or is it Sabda Kawan? Or is it the human beings? And then the two creatures collided with supernatural powers. For 40 days and 40 nights, they fought each other. And then, realizing that Sabda Kawan was indeed very great, Shesubakir 
then took out his ultimate weapon, the Kiai Spanjang spear, and then stuck it right in the top of the mountain, on the top of the mountain. And then, surprisingly, Sabda Balon felt incredibly he twitched and finally he surrendered to Sheikh Subakir. Uh, until finally, Sabda Paul and his followers returned to Mount Srandil and Alas Roban. And after no longer controlled by evil spirits, the surrounding community began to arrive and reside around the mountain. And they began to explore Islam under the guidance of Sheikh Subakir. And once it was enough, Sheikh Subakir then returned to Turkey. And do you know what? That the cleric spear has remained stuck until now. And that's the end of the story. I hope you guys know that this story reminds us all to always live in happily and happily and in a peaceful life for others. Because this earth belongs to us and we can never Keep it alone. Okay, thank you for your appreciation. That's from you.